Hello and welcome to the latest episode of my Knitting and Crochet podcast. My name on Instagram is Orchid Heart and I live in Birmingham in England. Um, so this is a slightly new setup. I have had a flurry of new followers lately, so I want to say thank you and welcome and welcome back if you are returning. Um, but I have a slightly new addition to my setup because a few lovely people had sent me some support on Ko-Fi and I use that to buy myself a little microphone um, because I know my sound is sometimes a bit meh because I am just filming on my phone. I'm not a techie. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. And also if you guys can let me know whether using this microphone is better or not sound wise, because honestly, I don't think I will be able to tell because the speaker on my laptop is completely and utterly shot. So I have to use an external speaker or headphones to watch or listen to anything. And I think that overcompensates for the sound. So I kind of have to guess, uh, which is a bit frustrating, but you know, I'm not gonna buy a new laptop just because the speaker doesn't work. Um, the same thing's happened to my partner's laptop. And this is something that I've never experienced before. So I don't know whether newer laptops are just rubbish, but anyway, we don't need to get into that. That isn't why we're here. Um, so yeah, but also with this microphone, I have to use a very specific app to record on my phone, not just the standard like filming section on the phone. So I don't really know how this is going to look or how it's going to sound. So feedback is definitely welcome. Um, and I also wanted to say thank you for all the lovely comments and stuff I've had lately. Like it's been really nice to engage with you all and, and hear what everyone's getting up to. And I have since announced the giveaway winners. Um, for the YouTube giveaway as well as the Instagram giveaway. Oh, really large butterflies flying outside the window. So it's October here in Birmingham. Um, we're apparently going to get a heat wave this weekend, 25 degrees. I don't think in my life I've ever experienced 25 degrees in October. And I mentioned to a few people that I'd seen this like on the news and on the weather upcoming, and nobody believes me because that's not something that happens here. It should be cold by now. Um, I have mixed feelings about it. <laughs> I am enjoying that it's really sunny and bright, um, but it is a bit strange that it's so mild. However, given that I do live in this very cold house, I'm trying to enjoy it because it won't be long before I will be freezing to death for the entire winter. <laughs> so there we go. I am wearing my Lax Pullover by Caitlin Hunter. I did record a whole video about this not so long ago. And the thumbnail is a picture of this jumper. Um, if you think it's really lovely and you want to knit one, I really recommend watching that video because it was really not a great pattern. Um, I had to do a lot of hacking, literally cutting into my knitting. I really don't recommend, so I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I love mine. So anyway, let's get into the knitting. Let me grab what it is I'm going to show you. Sorry, I have things all over the room. I'm hoping the other thing is with this microphone, if I move and I say something, you'll still be able to hear me. So this will be a good experiment um, because in normal podcasting fashion, I've just put everything on the spare bed next to me. So I'll have to pick up and grab things. Um, I'm also keeping an eye on a few other things at the same time. I'm really sorry. I have got really into the video podcasting feeling lately. And so I've done quite a few videos the answer is what I'm actually working on, but like everything I'd love to knit this autumn, everything that I've knit in the past that I really love wearing in autumn. Um, and I am in the process of recording a video about making my quilt, um, about my autumn non-knitting projects I want to do. And a few people have asked about styling um, handmade wardrobe items. So I'm kind of thinking about how I'm gonna do that too. Um, but if you have any other ideas of other videos that you'd like to see from me, I am really interested in um, hearing those ideas because I think the thing I struggle with is coming up with ideas. <laughs> so, yeah, um, but let me know what you'd like to see. So I am a bit chaos and I'm just going to grab things and show them to you. And so this episode, which you should be able to tell from the thumbnail and the title, is just a standard what I've been knitting so far at the moment kind of podcast. So, yes. So I shared a couple of weeks ago the things I want to knit this autumn and I have made quite good progress and I've cast on a few wildcard items that I didn't intend to. 
which is inevitable, you know, so I'm not going to get through everything I wanted to do because A, the list was impossible and B, I've already like digressed from it. So I'm going to start with my first finished object, which I think I mentioned in a video that I was going to share with you and I had shared it with you in a version of the video you hadn't seen, but by the time I ended up filming the one that you were going to see, I was wearing them. <laughs> So, and I couldn't show you my feet. So I thought I'd show them to you briefly. So it's these socks. So again, I'm not really sure with using this new app set up how this is going to look showing you things. And so if it's wildly out of focus, I will take pictures and insert them. If I discover that the sound quality and the video quality is fine, this might be one of those videos that doesn't get edited and goes straight to YouTube. Um, because quite honestly I could do with a break from video editing um, because I really enjoy filming them and making them I don't really enjoy the editing and the rendering because the rendering which is what you do after you've edited the video so you put all the bits together this is for those of you who aren't like video people you put all the bits together you save it and then you've got to like render it which means like this really long saving process where your computer turns it into one file and it can take my computer 13 hours and it can crash halfway through. So sometimes it takes multiple days and my laptop can't cope rendering at the same time as doing anything else. So I tend to do it at night or I set it up to render at night or whilst I'm working um, because I, I can't watch YouTube or do anything. I can't even look something up on Ravelry. It just crashes. And, you know, when it crashes five hours into the process, it's really irritating. So, um, yes. Anyway, so sometimes I give myself a break and just do a straight to upload video, which this might be, depending on how it comes out. So these are um, some sort of made up socks. I mentioned before that I was really inspired by some socks that Laura Penrose made a really long time ago, which she made in exactly these yarns and these colours. This is Exmoor Sock by John Arben. And these yarns are going to reappear again in a bit. And um, sorry about that noise. Um, and so this is um, uh, Bibblebug, Mizzle, Quick Beam, and Drumble. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to put the the computer on silent. I don't know if you can still hear me actually. So this will be a good editing experiment. Right. Hopefully we won't get disturbed. Um, so yeah, I was really inspired by the socks that she'd made in those colours, but um, she said she wasn't going to release it as a pattern. And so I found this colour work chart, which isn't stranded colour work, it's like slip stitches in a pattern by Pip and Pin called Ocean Drive. And so I just did a couple of repeats on the leg because I'm really lazy and I don't do all over colour work on socks. There is now an exception, which I'll share in a bit. So these came out a bit big. I don't really know what's gone on in my brain when it comes to socks. When I first started knitting socks, I was doing 60 stitches on two millimetre needles and they fit. And then at some point I decided to start doing 64 stitches because I didn't think it'd make that much difference. And it really does. So these are mostly 64 stitches, but a bit more on the colour work bit. So that um, like I increased and did a larger size for the colour work, which has worked on other pairs of socks for me. But I think when the rest of the stock, sock is still 60 stitches. So these are a bit big and they keep falling down on my leg. So I might offer them to my mother because she recently gave me back a pair of socks that I did knit for her a couple of years ago. Um, because they were too restricted, um, she couldn't get them over her ankles. But these aren't her colours, I have a feeling she'll probably hate them, so I'm not sure she will want them. I mean, I can still wear them around the house and in bed and stuff like that, they definitely will get worn. Um, but I definitely think I need to revert back to doing just 60 stitches, and I really hope I haven't made too many pairs that are too big because it's definitely limiting my options for wearing. Anyway, so that was one finished object. Um, generally vanilla socks, but with a few extra details. The next one I'm going to show you, I'm really pleased with.
So again, I don't really know how this is going to focus. So I'm sorry, my hair gets in everything. Um, so these are the underwing mitts. Can't remember the name of the designer. That will all be below. And I knit these in some mini skeins by Grenwee Fibre Co. The two black mini skeins are actually slightly different. One's slightly darker than the other um, because they came from different sets. This one's slightly darker. This one's slightly bluer. I actually think they were meant to be the same colour, but obviously with hand-dyed yarn, different batches always come out different. So, um, yeah, they have come out slightly different, but I honestly don't really think it's that visible. And then the contrast colour is a contrast by Grenwee Fibre Co. So I used three minis. I think this is a really good project for mini skeins. I needed just under one mini each of the dark colour, and then about three quarters of the contrast mini. Um, I love them. I think they're so cool. So I have to be honest, when I was knitting them, I didn't really enjoy the feel of the yarn. But now that I've blocked them and washed them, they do feel much nicer on because it is a super wash merino. Um, it's a sock blend yarn, so there's probably some nylon in there too. And that's not really something I use unless it's, unless it's for socks. So I was a bit worried that this might not be the most appropriate yarn for something like this because I definitely think like a Jameson spin drift might be really nice, like really woolly and rustic. But I don't have that. And I have these beautiful skeins in my stash for knitting socks. And I thought, well, you know, it's the same weight. It's the right amount. Better to use what we have than buy more. And so I thought, well, probably I'll be wearing these in the house anyway, um, rather than so much out and about because I get cold hands in the house. So maybe it's okay that they're a super wash nylon blend. Um, because they don't need to be super super warm because realistically when it gets to the point where you want super super warm um, you want your fingers covered don't you so I think it's fine so I love them they were absolutely addictive and I think the pair took me about 10 days to knit maybe two weeks um, I just I couldn't resist the only thing was because my contrast yarn has quite a lot of very variegation in it there was a point in which like some of the moon stitches um, were too dark and so you couldn't see them. So I had to cut out a lighter bit and duplicate stitch um, over just to make sure that it did look properly moony because it like lost the top of its crescent. But you know, that was it. So I really love those. And they were one of the projects that was on my autumn make list. So I'm really pleased I did knit those. And I feel like that's a strong start to the season. Um, the next thing that was on my autumn make list um, was the storm hood, and I haven't trimmed my ends yet. Um, I was umming and ahhing with the rest of my manchalope whether to knit the unarmored defense cow, which I have knit before, but I don't like the yarn it's knit in, so I'm definitely going to frog it, um, or the storm hood in this yarn. And I decided that the unarmored defense cow might be something that I knit whilst traveling. I have, however, cast something on in that yarn I was going to knit it up in, so maybe not, um, unless I buy some yarn whilst I'm away. And so I knit the storm hood in it. So it's a bit of a strange looking object. Um, and it's like a... So I knit it because um, Cat Weaver had knit one and it looked really good on her with her East Wind jacket. I'm not going to put it on because I have my hair up, but if I do end up editing this, then I'll stick a picture in. If not, you'll have to go look at my Instagram and see if I've posted one yet. Um, but this is because when it gets really cold, I get really, really cold ears, and I thought wearing it over a hat might be quite a good idea for the walks. I'm not sure it's going to look particularly dead cool or anything, but, um, you know, it's quite, because it's knit in unspun, it's actually really, really, really light. I mean, this was a 100 gram plate when I started and there's still quite a lot left. So I think it probably doesn't weigh very much. So it probably can scrunch up into my bag and not take up very much space. Now, because it's quite a fragile unspun when you're knitting with it, I had to cast on with another yarn. So I cast on with this other like ochre colored yarn and I was able to bind off just about um, with just the unspun. If I could spin, I probably would have spun some of it and then used that to cast it on. 
Um, but because of the nature of the unspun, you have two options for finishing and closing the top. You can kitchen it, stitch it together, or you can three needle bind off. And that kind of changes how you do your last few rows. Um, to do the three needle bind off, you have to do like, um, she gives you instructions for like a braided section, which really is just um, knitting and purling. Um, but it creates this kind of texture on the top. And I thought because it was unspun that trying to do kitchener stitch with it would be unrealistic. It would just keep breaking. And so I opted to do a three needle bind off to close it off. And that was fine. So we, we shall see if I wear it. You know, it was quite a quick knit. Um, I did make a mistake, which I have not rectified. You have two neck options where to do like a straight rib or a flared rib. And I opt to do the flared rib. And you're meant to do like you do a certain amount um with more stitches then you decrease down and you go down a needle size <laughs> and then you do a bit so i guess it's closer around the neck and then you go back up a needle size and knit the rest of the hood and i did not go down a needle size for the middle part of my rib so my rib's going to be quite baggy um but again because it's unspun i just didn't think i'd be able to rip it back that easily um so i just carried on because i thought it's probably going to be under a scarf anyway so who cares so yes, that was knit in Manchalope, the patterns by Albiona McLaughlin. Um, and I will let you know this winter how much I end up wearing it because I don't know. So that's my finished objects. I've got a couple of whips to share with you now. Uh, one of which was on my make list. The other two were rogue. <laughs> Hold on. So I think I was three quarters of the way through one last time. So this is the Fairy Ring Socks by... Oh, interesting. I oh, know. What have I done? No, that's okay. I tried steam blocking these the other day and I wonder if I felted the red stitches. Sorry, you're witnessing me having a slight crisis. I think it's okay. Because they are still stretching. I better try that on later just to make sure. These are the fairy magic fairy ring, fairy ring socks by Katie Greenbean. So I think I was just about to start the um, decreases when I was showing you the, the other day. And I am now halfway through the foot on the second one. I need to try these on after this just to make sure. So I was umming and ahhing because I don't know if you can see in this light, there is like a flea stitch detail with the lighter gray. The two shades of gray are very subtle contrast wise. Um, and I was really struggling to do the flea stitch on the, de the gusset decrease section. So I just decided not to do color work on the foot, which means they're not gonna be quite as thick and cozy. But it does mean there'll be a lot less floats to catch my toes on. So maybe that is actually better. I don't know. And then you might just about be able to see that I did the colour works that you do between the two colours changing on the toe. Um, and then the toe is just the lighter grey. Because I actually used the entire skein, well, the entire half of the dark skein to knit this. So I think I probably will end up using whole dark skein of drover and most of the mid gray skein um, and then just some scraps for the other bits so worth bearing in mind i think because i think she recommends a lot more of the drover and it's not particularly cheap so drover is a sock yarn by daughter of a shepherd i really love it it's really rustic feeling it's undyed um, it's all british sheep i think from the peak district it isn't a million miles away from me actually um but there is a bit of nylon in there which i do kind of need because i do wear my socks just like normal socks so there we go so these are nearly done i'm hoping i can finish them this week and then i can take them with me to my holiday in america which is very soon <laughs> um 
and I have them in my project bag so I've got Katie Greedean's um, enamel badges on. So this bag is actually by a company called Woodsy and Wild which I won in a giveaway last year I think um, and I love it because it's got like a little zip pocket on the back. That's one of my whips. This is throwing it onto the spare bed. <laughs> um, and then I've got two more. So my first rogue one. I've been umming and ahhing about knitting a vest for a really long time because I can't decide if I actually like them or not. But um, Cat Weaver, yes, I do have a bit of a style obsession with her. Um, she had a picture where she was wearing the gondor vest over a lacy long sleeve top and i thought it looked really cool and i have a dress that's got quite puffy sleeves so i thought i might knit one to wear over that and so i have cast on that and it's um not very far along to be honest it's knit in all over rib which is not something i enjoy knitting so that could be interesting um but i'm persevering I'm knitting it in this, uh, it's called Wild Wool by Erica Knight and it's a combination of nettle fibre and wool. So I think it won't be too warm, so it might be quite good for the office. Um, and it feels really lovely, but I think it is a single ply, there's like one strand, so I'm interested to see how well it will wear. And I do wonder, and I have no idea if this is true or not, whether ribbing might be more hard wearing than stockinette because there's more texture and more twisting therefore it might suit the single ply nature of this more i have no idea but it's really silky feeling actually um, and i love the color the color is called poodle um i actually went to go see the film recently about the nettle dress it's about this um guy who basically forages enough nettle processes it spins it and weaves it into a fabric and makes a dress as a form of processing the grief of his wife passing and it was a really beautiful film and i cast this on the next day actually um it was a bit of a coincidence but it also felt kind of nice that you know i saw that film and now i'm working with nettle fiber myself granted completely not in the same way what he was doing was an absolute work of art absolutely incredible it took him seven years can't even imagine um so that's the gondor vest it's like her just a vest that's all over rib um with a lot of negative ease a bit retro looking so i think that could be quite nice it might be one of those things i knit and end up not wearing very much but i hope not um and so that was a bit of a rogue um cast on project my other and my last whip i'm going to share with you my last rogue cast on is actually a test knit which I was secretly hoping to be asked to do, and I was. Um, and so this is a new sock pattern by Stone Knits. And it's this all over colorwork sock featuring mushrooms. <laughs> and I love mushrooms. So um, I have never done three color color work all over before i think i had one or two rows of three color color work on this but it was only one or two rows whereas this is pretty much continuously three stranded color work which for a sock is quite intense i'm not gonna lie look at my insides that's a lot um, and this is in the same um, yarn and colors that i shared earlier for my john arban sock and so i'm trying to knit it just with leftovers which means I haven't got very much of the purple left. So I did do a shorter rib and my toe is going to have to be a different colour. I think probably I will do orange, maybe yellow, probably orange. Um, so what am I going to say about this? I'm really enjoying this. The chart is quite easy to follow. Um, I'm knitting the size two on two point five millimeter needles so it is quite a bit bigger than i'm used to knitting however because there is so much color work there isn't so much stretch so it does need to be a bit bigger and i think these are probably for me going to be house socks because 
I am quite hard wearing. No, 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 not house socks. Socks to wear with my buckle shoes because the leg is not quite long enough to wear with my boots. And I want to make the most of being able to see the beautiful colour work. I think wearing these in boots would be a bit of a waste um, because it is quite a lot of work. Um, but I am really, really enjoying it. I have never done a short wear heel before. And so it's not the neatest because I didn't really know what I was doing. But the pattern is very clear. I just don't think I really fully paid attention because I don't have so much time to finish this by the deadline because I'm going on holiday. Because I'm going to Rhinebeck. Um, oh, well, I'm going to see family as well. But I am also going to Rhinebeck. I'm very excited. And so I want to finish one of these before I go away. So she's calling it the Magic Mycelium Sock. Um, and it's by Stone Knits. And yes, I'm test knitting it for her. And so far, it's been really pleasurable. And I'm really enjoying it. So, But I think if I was going to knit this again, and I wasn't on a bit of a yarn chicken situation, I probably would have done another repeat at least on the leg and a longer rib because i think i'd want it to be more up here um yeah and if i'm honest if it wasn't a test knit i'd probably only do color work on the leg and not the foot because i'm really lazy or maybe i wouldn't do three stranded color work on the leg i actually don't think you have any choice because i think you could skip the spots but you would still have to do three stranded color work to do the stalks so and that's a lot of duplicate stitch. But yeah, I think it's really lovely. And I have it in my very appropriate Knitting Nelly mushroom bag. So that's everything I wanted to share with you today. Let's hope that all recorded okay. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know what you're working on. Um, have you managed to cast on any of your autumn projects yet? How are they going? I need to pick up, I'm looking at the basket on the floor, my mother-in-law's Maya cardigan and do some more work on that definitely do need to crack on um but i'm kind of somehow naively hoping i can finish my fairy ring sock this test knit sock and my vest in two weeks well it's less than two weeks i leave on the 17th and it's now the fifth yeah so let's see if i manage that or not <laughs> um so yeah i might be able to post up a video whilst i'm away because i do have some recorded that i've not shared yet so you might hear from me whilst i'm off if not, this might be the last video until I'm back. So there might be a bit of a break. Um, and that's why I'm traveling around in lovely America. If anybody has any tips for the Buffalo area, Niagara Falls area, Toronto, Hamilton, Detroit or Chicago, or en route between any of those places, please let me know because that's kind of our route that we're doing after Rhinebeck. So thank you. I hope everyone's well. Thank you for joining me and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.